Okay, so it is uh, near the last day, uh, and we're going to be this tank's been dry for a few days, and we're going to stick in the tank sealer. Um, I just have a wisdom tooth out yesterday, so if I'm uh, talking a little more funny than usual, um, foregoing the uh, Aussie accent, of course, um, that's why. So let's get this done. So the tank sealer is going to go in. Um, I've re watched the KBS video again. Uh, now we need to chuck this in and pretty much roll it around. Uh, just keep it going for a little while and make sure it gets in obviously all corners of the tank, especially where we need it. Uh, and then we've got to drain it out and then leave the tank sit, sit for 96 hours minimum. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is probably, uh, you know, we'll leave this for a week. So uh, today's now Saturday, so if we leave it the next Saturday, we'll be well and truly covered. Um, and we'll certainly cover the four days uh, minimum required. And then obviously next Saturday we can throw it back together, uh, fill her up, and uh, see how she goes. So obviously this stuff, I'm just shaking the shit out at the moment, obviously this stuff is going to coat all the internals and anything it comes in contact with. Uh, one of the things the guy did from the KBS website was to throw a garbage bag uh, just inside here um, so as to not get the coating uh, on the filler cap. So we're going to do that one-handed there we go jobs are good uh, and on the underneath because uh, I'm going to refit the um, obviously the fuel pump housing uh, now I am going to be happy to have some of the coating here um, in this pipe I have removed the rubber uh, seal there that was there uh, it's quite a large one that's the one that actually seals going up into the fuel pump itself so I've taken that off don't want that coated I'm not really want the coating to get down inside here uh, to prevent that happening again uh, so what I'm going to do is just again th these are actually freezer bags just I thought they're a little bit lighter and probably a bit easier to work with in a garbage bag but uh, uh, so what we're going to do is just I'm just going to put a rubber uh, sorry a piece of the bag on the end here put an elastic band probably around the end just to hold that in here and uh, let the sealant get all the way down there because uh, surely there must be a little bit of rust in there as well I am going to take their advice on uh, wearing some rubber gloves. Apparently if you get this stuff on you, it's uh, pretty difficult to get off. Now the kit did actually come with a pair of rubber gloves, um, but I don't know what I've done with them. So they're in the shed there somewhere. So here's a pair of set of rubber gloves that I, you know, got for uh, cutting out the chilies and uh, possible future sexual adventures. So um, there we go. So I will chuck a pair of those on just to be sure. Yeah. Oh, they're straight into the tank. What I'd end up doing instead of grabbing one of the plastic bags, I just cut one of the fingers off uh, one of the gloves that I had on and just elastic band that up. So uh, I didn't uh, have Peter Dinklage's number, so I couldn't grab one of his one of his condoms. But uh, so we did that instead. So hopefully that shall suffice. Okay, so that's in there and done. I'm just sort of moving it round still a little bit more because um, this is the it's that top section where I really want the coating to be. Obviously, we want a full coating. But uh, we want to really make, want to make sure that we've got that coating right at the front, which is where the, where the issue was. We don't want this turn to dry. And we are only just meant to sort of give it a coating and then drain it straight out, so we'll have it out shortly. One thing to note if you've checked out the KBS website um, and you've watched the guys doing their, their car fuel tank, he does sort of say that I think they had a four litre tank of this stuff and uh, did say that, you know, just let it flow around and, and do it nice and slow so you can feel where the sealant actually is uh, but I can tell you with the one litre tank or the one litre um, tin of this stuff you can't really tell where it is so you're pretty much just going to have to just go nice and slow and uh, make sure you're getting it everywhere because you'll see the consistency when you pour it in you'll know roughly how quickly it's going to flow but with, I guess with a car fuel tank, obviously with the internal baffles and stuff, probably a little bit easier than a bike fuel tank because they tend to be odd shapes. 
So I think we're just about ready to pull this out. It's probably been in for, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. And they do say just to keep the tin and then drain the excess back into that and not to put the lid back on uh, because it's still chemical reaction going on. Uh, it can heat up I think or cause a bit of pressure um, and then obviously cause an explosion if you've left the tin on so you basically just drain out the excess whatever you've got left in the tank obviously not wanting to keep any for future use and then uh, and then leave it out somewhere safe so uh, nobody's going to get to it up on a shelf or something and uh, and let it cure before putting the lid back on and just dispensing of it so Uh, the good news here is that uh, these bolts for the the hold the fuel pump on don't go all the way through into the tank. You can see they're not sealed. Okay, we haven't really got that down in the bottom there. You can see it hasn't uh, gone down. But we can see that, but there is a bit more there. We'll go with that. You can see how quickly I guess that's moving. I've got to tell you, I'm not entirely confident that uh, there was enough sealant in there for, the, for this job, to be honest. I would have been just about sure that uh, it would have run down under here. So you can even see part of this hasn't got a full coating either. So, just have a look inside and see what we can see. It's all in uh, and spread around. And you can see there's a good coating there. There's a little bit of a pool here and there. Now the problem you've got is that, uh, like I said, there seemed to be like a proportional, um, probably less in this than they did in the uh, car one. Well, but you don't get to see the end result of the car one, uh, the internals. But what I found was when I tipped it up to uh, get rid of it and get the last foot out, um, nothing come out. And as we saw, the bottom of the fuel tank holder wasn't um, fully covered either. So. When I opened it up, I did notice there was a few spots missing, and I could see in there. Uh, it was actually moving quite a bit slower than I thought it was. Maybe it had already started to cure. Um, but what I've actually found was, and you're going to need to allocate yourself a decent amount of time for this, is just take the filler off, or wherever you filled it up, providing that you can flip it and move it without it coming out at you. Um, and what I found was I could see in there with a reasonable amount of light, uh, and I could turn the tank up and down and actually watch it flowing into the areas that I needed it to be uh, and move it around. Now, in doing that consistently for probably, I don't know, 40 minutes, maybe even an hour, um, you'll see it starting to cure on the spots where you want it to, the coating staying there, you know, you can start to roll it into a different section, get another coating over there, then bring it back. And effectively, you know, as if you were spray painting, uh, it's, it's like giving it multiple coats, I guess. And you'll see uh, as you go along, the coatings get thicker and it seems to be staying there and it's uh, getting into the places that you need it to be. And because you're, you know, you're eyeballing it, you're watching it, you, you know where it's going, uh, you know what the flow rate is and uh, I think that does a better job. <clears throat> so put it in there initially, you know, move it all around, roll it around, turn it up into spots where it's probably going to come out of the filler or wherever you put it in initially. Um, and then once you think you've got a good coating and it's pretty much holding under the walls, you know, open it up, have a look, you'll see how much is pulled in there uh, and then whether that's okay to work with it. If it's not, close it back up, do it again. Uh, eventually you'll get to a point where uh, there's only, uh, you know, enough to just pull up in little little spots and you can just, you know, roll that around and that'll that'll get used up as you go. I think you can see how slowly that's, that's moving now. That's about the same speed as it was in the tank, bigger size. So it was uh, rolling around a lot slower than that. You can see some parts it just does not want to coat and you just got to be very patient with it and just let it roll and let it do its thing find out where the uh, the most of it is like that there you go uh, and you'll eventually get a coating so imagine doing that just on a larger scale inside the tank and uh, your job will be a good one okay so that's it so we'll uh, chuck this back in the shed for about four days actually it's going to be about a week so be looking closer to six days to make sure it's well and truly cured 
again because we were unable to get the excess out we may have a few spots in there that are going to be a little bit thicker than we wanted them to be uh, but that actually shouldn't be a bad thing so we'll uh, come back to you in the next part when we're chucking this back on the bike and we'll give you a look and see what it looks like and uh, we might even do that wiring up on the uh, on the charger as well all right we'll uh, talk to you in the next one guys cheers